Thank you, Madam President, for the report. And now I understand there's uh, at mic number two, there's a uh, motion resolution coming forward. Good morning, or good afternoon, I think. We've passed the dinner hour. Thank you. Just for identification, I am Lisa Weber. I'm one of the commissioners with the, um, with the commission. And I have beside me Karen Collins, who is also a commissioner. Oh, there's a mouse. Oh, my God. Under that table. Ah! A mouse. A mouse. Oh. Let's get some of our harvesters and trappers out there real quick. There. Get the mouse out. Skin that mouse. Lap. Yeah. And then oh after, stretch it out and skin it, and we'll oh. save that hide for a little pair of moccasins. Oh my god. <laughs> Sorry. Baby <laughs> oh Okay. Sorry. You started at bike number two. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> gotta throw some culture in here. Okay. So Karen and I uh, would like to read in a, a proposed resolution. We also have our fellow commissioner, Travis Inkster, who we've asked to uh, present and table the constitution that was, that was the subject matter discussed at yesterday's all-day workshop, to table that before this. Perfect. <laughs> Sorry, I'm out of breath yeah. with that mouse. Yeah. So, Travis, if you wouldn't mind tabling that, the uh, draft constitution. And it, it is the draft that was in the packages as well that all uh, delegates would have received. Thank you, Travis. <laughs> oh, Thank you. you. <laughs> okay, here we go. So, we proposed the following resolution. Whereas the Métis Nation emerged as a dis distinct Indigenous people in the historic Northwest before Canada became Canada and Alberta became Alberta. Speak closer to the mic if you could. Oh, okay. Point of order. Now, mic number three. Need a resolution to accept the president's report. And being there is a little excitement in this room, maybe we could save all those resolutions for after lunch. My understanding is this, part, this is part of the president's report as well. So as a chair, uh, I'll make the decision that just before we break for lunch, we're going to continue on with this, with this uh, uh, resolution that, that's being presented. But thank you for uh, bringing up that point of order. I just wanted to let you know that my understanding of it is this is an extension of the president's report as well. And so I'm just going to let it continue. Mic number two, if you could finish off. Thank you. I'll try to speak closer to the mic. Thank you. And whereas all Indigenous peoples hold the inherent rights to self-determination and self-government, as recognized in the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, and protected by Section 35 of the Constitution Act 1982. And whereas for generations, Métis Nation citizens and communities within what is now known as Alberta have come together to advance Métis rights, including exercising and implementing the Métis right of self-government, through the creation and evolution of the Métis Nation of Alberta, MNA, as the government of the Métis Nation within Alberta. And whereas through the hard work and determination of our ancestors over the generations, the MNA is now the oldest continuous Métis government within the Métis Nation homeland and has the largest registry of verified Métis rights holders with over 54,000 registered MNA citizens and thousands more registering each year. And whereas, whereas MNA citizens, Métis communities, and this annual General Assembly, MNA AGA, has provided consistent and persistent direction to the MNA to further advance Métis rights and self-government in Alberta through the development and adoption of a constitution as Métis law, instead of continuing to operate under the MNA bylaws and Alberta Societies Act, and whereas after generations of gener organization, political advocacy, and Métis rights litigation that has gone all the way to the Supreme Court of Canada, on June 27, 2019, Canada signed the historic Métis Government Recognition and Self-Government Agreement, MGRSA, within, with the MNA. And whereas the MGRSA recognizes the Métis Nation within Alberta, possesses the inherent right to self-government that is protected by Section 35, and sets out a process to fully implement a government-to-government -government relationship between Canada and the Métis Nation of Alberta based on a constitution as Métis law, 
being developed and adopted by the MA and Parliament adopting its own legislation to give effect, legal force and effect to the MGRSA in Canadian law. And whereas the 2019 MA AGA adopted a resolution establishing a constitution commission to consult on and develop a draft constitution that all Metis MA citizens will ultimately have an opportunity to consider and vote on through a pr province wide ratification. And whereas the Constitution Commission, number one, reviewed and relied on numerous self government reports that MA has prepared over generations, number two, held a series of roundtables with the MA Provincial Council. MA regions, which included MA locals, the MA Judiciary Council, MA affiliates, as well as with elders, women, youth, and three, prepared a draft Otopimsoak Metis government constitution that was presented to the 2021 MA AGA. And whereas, based on the direction received from the 2021 MA AGA, the Constitution Commission held hearings and gatherings across Alberta in 2021 and 2022 to receive feedback on the draft constitution, and all m &A citizens were invited to submit written comments on the draft constitution. And whereas a special meeting was held on June 4th, 2022, and approved a special resolution to postpone the m &A general election until September 2023, to allow all MNA citizens to vote on a final draft of the Otipimswak Metis government constitution so that the next general election will be conducted under the self-government authority of the constitution if it is ultimately approved, including the new positions to be elected as part of the citizens council in the constitution. And whereas the Constitution Commission, based on its above noted mandate and the province-wide consultations it undertook in 2021 and 2022, has now tabled a final draft of the Otipimswak Métis Government Constitution with the 2022 MNA AGA. Now therefore, the 94th MNA AGA resolves that A, the final draft of the Otipimswak Métis Government Constitution is approved to be placed in the hands of all m &A citizens and that a private province-wide ratification vote be held in the fall of 2022 to allow all Métis m &A citizens 16 years of age or over to vote on the potential passage of this fundamental Métis law. <clears throat> B, the m &A provide information on the final draft of the Otipemswak Métis government constitution to all m &A citizens, including ensuring information is sent to each citizen's last known mailing address, as well as undertaking an extensive information and media campaign on the ratification vote to encourage as many citizens as possible to vote. C, the m &A advocate that the Parliament of Canada introduce the implementation legislation contemplated in the MGRSA by the end of 2022, and the MGRSA potentially be supplemented to ensure that the MNA has the same self-government recognition provided to all other Métis Nation governments. And D, if a majority of MNA citizens who vote in the province-wide ratification approve the final draft of the Otipimswak Métis Government Constitution, that is a 50% plus one, a special meeting will be called to implement the new constitution, including ensuring the general election under the new constitution be held in September 2023. Thank you. Now, ma'am, uh, you didn't mention if you're removing that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, at the beginning I did. I think we got interrupted by Mr. Mouse, but yes, that was the proposed okay. motion I moved to accept. Okay. Do we have a seconder? <laughs> Karen Collins, I very honorably second the resolution. Thank you. So now what we're going to do, guys, is I'm going to get a copy of that up here so that in case there's any questions and I have to refer to it. And as well, we're checking with the back folks there to see if we can get that on the screen in, in the event we have to put it on the screen. But hopefully uh, 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 we may not get to that point. So uh, with the movers and the seconders, is there any discussion on this? Uh, Mike number three. 
Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, I was under the impression that we had to move to accept the President's report before we started debating any other motions. Sure, uh, and these are some of the Métis rules that, we, that, uh, that uh, we've, uh, we've been working under for uh, as long as I've been part of this, this process. And so the, uh, what we're doing is this is part and parcel of the President's report. So we're going to have a vote on this, and then once this is done, then I'll ask for a motion to accept the President's report. Uh, 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 as, as presented, and this being part of that, uh, of our presentation. So we have a motion on the floor to accept this resolution, ordinary resolution, to uh, uh, basically begin move forward on the process, uh, to take the, uh, the draft uh, res uh, constitution that's been drafted, to take it out to the people in a referendum, and then uh, if that referendum is successful, then there'll be a special meeting call to uh, basically to ratify that, and to make that jump into uh, basically self-government and, and, and the new way of life for us. Uh, in the meantime, any more discussion? Mic number three. Melanie Homanios, Region 4. And uh, first off, Bruce, I disagree. This was not a part of the President's report. This is a part of the Commission's report that reported yesterday to this Assembly. But over and above that, because your way is different than mine, I'll accept that. But the reality of this is that that is a very complex resolution. None of us have seen it. I didn't hear anything about online voting, ballot box, or any other means to vote to ratify a constitution as was described yesterday to us. So where is that in this resolution? And ma'am, I can't speak to that, but uh, what I would, the way I see it and the way that I'm, I'm, I'm understanding this, ma'am, I know, but I'm just saying this to you, is that those are processes that will be developed once this decision is made. If the people make a decision that they're going to go to a referendum, then they'll work out the details of that referendum. Will it be call-in, mail-in, face-to-face, Zoom, whatever? And so I'm not going to preempt that by saying that's got to be in this, in, uh, should be in part of this resolution. That was your comments. But in the meantime, is there any more discussion on whether or not you favor this resolution? Mike number two. I echo the same sentiments. I don't think that this was called properly. But regardless, I want to speak against the resolution. It's difficult to refute when we have hundreds of citizens here, all who likely agree that, you know, our founding parents, they strove and they were striving and we still are striving for a constitution. This is something we all want. We want a constitution that allows us to participate, one that allows us to have our vested interests, one that allows us to organize. This one falls short. I heard in the reports today that there was overwhelming support. I didn't hear that yesterday. I heard great questions being asked. I heard local leaders from big municipalities, big locals saying, no one showed up, but we wrote asking for it. We're the Ote Pemswick, the people who own themselves. This constitution is something we need, just not yet. It's not ready yet. We need a constitution that's going to allow for our participation. You know, I've heard routinely that a constitution doesn't have to be perfect. This one doesn't have an amendment formula. It's set in place for five years and gives overarching powers to a cabinet selected by a president. If we elect a citizens council, that group needs a say. That's owning ourselves. I was a history teacher. You don't need to be a history teacher, a political scientist, or a rocket scientist to figure out that this does not represent us. This is gonna overturn, you know, really what was a weak special resolution in Grand Prairie. There was a call to extend elections and it went to a vote and two secret private ballots. And it won by a margin of one. That is not a clear direction in support of a constitution. I urge you, my Métis Nation citizens, own yourselves. Let's get this constitution done. It's unprecedented, we will, but we need time. We heard that from the Constitution Committee yesterday. I don't know where the change of directions come. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mike number three. Merlene Crossan, uh, Region 4. I just want to say that this was put in here unexpectedly to 
many of our citizens here. There's probably close to 80 people outside the door here standing in line for lunch. We have diabetics in here. It's already 1230 and I think this is uncalled for. Okay. So we have a motion on the floor. We've had discussion. Is there nobody else at the mic? You wanted to say something, ma'am? No? Is there any other discussion? Mic number one, and then we'll uh, call for a question, and then we'll... Uh, Hello. And then mic number four, and then we'll uh, go okay. to a vote. Yesterday, um, Daryl Turner, Region 3. Yesterday it was referred to, which I found kind of condescending, uh, junior high level of understanding. But I will admit... I could be categorized as that. This is what I do know, is that we're dealing with governments, we're dealing with a time frame. Now, the Constitution, I believe, has a five-year period that amendments could be made and corrected to ensure it works for us. But if we allow this not to go ahead, there is a very good chance that we will not get another opportunity if there's a change in government. If there's a change in government, that government could last four years, eight years, or longer. The Constitution gives us a timeline of five years to get it correct. Now, I'm 67 years old. People ask me, how long have you been Métis, referring to the card. Well, I tell them I've been Métis since birth. But I've been known uh, when I was growing up because of my age. Métis wasn't an identifying name. It was half-breed. I was a half-breed. I'm proud of being a half-breed, but that's what I was called. I was not red. I was not white. And I, I felt slighted when the chief of Satina did not come here to talk. That just shows reality of where we stand in life. I do believe, let's carry on. Let's get this done while we have this opportunity. I don't know when the creator is going to punch my number, but I would love to be punched knowing I am a person in Canada. I am more than just on, on, on the early senses. This particular person, half-breed, I want to be identified. We will worry about getting it corrected, getting it to suit us when we get it in law. And what's your name, sir? Daryl Turner, Region 3. Thank you. All right, we're going to go to mic number four, mic number three, then mic number two. So mic number four. Hi, Valerie Quintel, Conklin Métis Local, Region 1. Uh, my concern, I guess, today is that I think that the President's report should be voted on separately and not include any commission business, because all along we've been told, like with, uh, in communication, that m and is separate from the commission business. So that is my concern. I think the president's report should be voted on solely. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go to uh, mic number three now, and then mic number two. Thanks. Uh, good afternoon, Carmen Wells from Region 1. Uh, I had uh, quite a few questions, but I will try and keep it short because I have about five pages of questions. Um, I did want to ask the latest draft we received yesterday, was that the first view of that latest draft was yesterday? Does anybody know that? Uh, not up here, but I, I, I looked at the commission and uh, have them uh, perhaps uh, provide an indication of that. So you know what, guys? Let Audrey speak to that one. This is what we're going to do. Only because I'm cognizant of the elders and I'm cognizant of how quickly we can deal with this, but I know we're not going to deal with this quickly right now. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to call a break and here's why we're going to have lunch for the elders and everybody else and then we're going to come back and we're going to finish dealing with this we're going to deal with this as part of the president's report still and then we'll continue on we'll get with with that 
right? So now there's also something that I understand that they're going to be circulating copies of the Constitution as well. So they'll be able to do that over lunch. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to call it. It's 1237. We're going to be back here at 1.30. And what we're going to do then is we're going to finish this discussion then. And I still have these, the folks that are at the mics. I encourage you to come back and finish, finish speaking. Bruce, but I do just meantime, want to say but I mean, totally respect the elders need to eat. I need to eat as well. I expect to be the first person to be yeah, talking the second the meeting begins. Of course. Thank there you. you go, Carmen. Of course. And this is what we're going to do, guys. Don't go out those doors. Go out these end doors, the north and south, and then come around that way, and they'll bring you back in through there. So go out the south doors and the uh, north doors, and then go around to the, to the buffets, and then they'll swing you back in here through those two doors. So if we could do that, and if we could have the young people here start serving the elders. If you're an elder, put up your hand, and some of these younger people here that are just hungry for, to serve the old people, they'll come and see you, and they'll come and help you, and they'll come uh, bring a plate. But before we do, while everybody's up there, can I have uh, uh, someone up here to say the prayer? I understand it's uh, uh, Norma. Norma, can you say it from mic number one? Please, everybody, we're gonna have a prayer. We're gonna say grace. Please join me in prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Heavenly Father, thank you for food in a world where many know only hunger, for our faith in a world where many know only fear, for our kinship and relationships in a world where many know only loneliness. Please bless this food we are about to share, those who prepared it and those who serve it, and for all those who have worked with this assembly together. For these many gifts bestowed on our people, we lift our love to you in praise and exaltation. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Donna. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, just before we broke for uh, lunch, we were in a little quagmire here in terms of how we were dealing with the, uh, with the different report that had just been done and also a motion that had been presented to the uh, AGA. Uh, regarding the Constitution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an executive decision, a, a decision of the chair, and uh, we're going to uh, kind of just back it up a little bit, and we're going to deal with uh, 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 one thing at a time. And so I've spoken to the president, who was just finishing up her report, and asked her if she was finished with it, or was there anything else that was part of it, and she, she did say she had just a final few comments to make as part of that. And I also spoke to the mover and the seconder for the uh, motion that was put forward on the Constitution. And they've agreed to pull it back in terms of an abeyance. And then once we're done with the report, we'll bring that back up and we'll finish and we'll have a fulsome conversation on that for everyone so that it's fair and equitable for everyone. Mike, number two, you had a comment? Testing. Yes, sir. I just want to make point of uh, clarification. I just want to make everybody know here that on that report, on Tuesday, there was a motion by provincial council to be part of the president's report. Audrey does not stand alone on that report. That's why it was there. That's Thank you, sir. Thank you for that. Okay, Audrey, you had, so guys, that we're gonna do with the president's report, and then we're gonna deal with that uh, resolution. So, Madam President, you had a few comments on your report before we call for a, a motion and a vote on it. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to make a couple of clarifications. So I did actually say that I had asked the commission to read it in to my report. So I want to tell you why it was included in this time. As president of the Métis Nation, I get elected like everyone else. I also take direction from provincial council. And Jimmy, thank you for getting up and saying that because that's, that's exactly what happened. Provincial council gave me direction early this week to include in my report that we needed to bring a motion forward on the constitution. Of course, everyone should have known that based on them giving me direction as well to call a special assembly previously. I then took the opportunity to talk to the Constitution Commission 
because they do do their own work, and talked to them and said, I am going to do this in my report. How do we deal with this resolution? They said, we will read it into your report because we want to be the mover and seconder and be able to answer questions for any citizen that needed questions answered. And I clearly said that my report, I will be having them read it into as a part of my report. So I just want to make that clear. I don't believe that I tried to fool anyone. I made it clear. The second thing I want to say is a special assembly. I'm not sure that it's realistic to say a special assembly was won by one vote. Maybe that's true, but if everybody here knows a special assembly has to be won by 75% compared to 25%. That's not one vote. That's 75%. And it's like everything else we've ever done at Métis Nation Assemblies. When there's special resolutions, they have a process. So I just want to make sure that, I didn't, that people are not believing that somehow we went around and finally got one extra person to say yes. And that assembly had double the amount that's needed for a special assembly under the structure that we live with today. We only need 100 people for an assembly. We had 204 there. And I know it was quick and I know it was all of those things, but it, wa it is what was asked by provincial council to call that special assembly. I guarantee you there would be some in these rooms, in this very room, that if I said to provincial council, no, I'm not going to call a special assembly, they would be labeling me as I've heard them label, label other leaders. So I just want to make that very clear because to me, I've always tried to be open and transparent in everything I do. Thank you. I don't really have any more that I need Thank to you. say. I just. I just wanted to clear that up because it's unfair to give people wrong information. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Could we get someone to uh, move to uh, accept the President's report and a uh, seconder? Mic number three. Brian Hamlin. Are you making a motion? Are you moving to accept the report? I am identifying myself for the assembly. Okay. Southern Free Métis Territory. Mr. Chairman, I move we uh, accept the President's report. Thank you, sir. Mic number two. Jeff Shalapu, uh, I second that motion. Sweet. Any discussion? Any questions? If not, do I hear a question? Oh. I have a... Bruce, I have a question. Mic number four. Uh, Audrey, I noticed when you were giving your report that you didn't mention the Dwayne Roth lawsuit where the m &A, yourself, and others are named, are the Métis citizens expected to pay your legal fees in addition to the m &As? So, uh, there, was a, there was no reason to, um, I don't believe, bring that today. That hasn't been even responded to as yet. He has filed a lawsuit. It hasn't been responded to as yet. And yes, but now that you've brought it up, the M&A has had a legal action put against them, as we all know. Sometimes these things never get to, to fruition. They, they end up going away. Um, I, and it was just um, about a month ago, not even a month ago, probably, yeah, maybe a month ago. So I didn't, it's in this fiscal years. Uh, I did not report that, but yes, I've been sued personally as well. And don't worry, Brenda, I've never asked the Métis Nation of Alberta to support anything personally for me. So Thank I won't you. do that. Thank you. Thank you very much. I just okay. want a clarification. Is there any other discussion on it? Uh, mic number four again. Or, no. Oh, I'm sorry, mic number two. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just a quick comment on, on your report on residential school stuff. and. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll try to keep it short. Uh, you, you indicated the federal government and, and the churches uh, were 
supposedly uh, responsible for the atrocities that, uh, that were uh, made in residential schools. I just want to point out that the provincial government it was responsible for education for Métis kids. Not the federal government, but the provincial government. And they should be held accountable for, uh, for implicit, implicitly uh, harming our, our children. Thank, Thank you, Mike. Number two. Thank you very much for that, Jeff. I will have someone else that I can start harping at. Thank you. No, I, I was, uh, I definitely knew that there was a lot of controversy between whether it was First Nations, whether it was Métis, who did what. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. We will put them on the, our agenda as well. Thanks. Mike number four. Hello, everyone. Um, Jenna. And I just have a couple of questions. Can you identify yourself for the uh, recorder? Hello. Mike four, Jenna Weber. And I have a couple of questions related to education. Um, I should disclose I am a educator by trade and a very vested uh, Métis citizen in the um, future and subsequent generations of us. So my first question is that um, since education is the foundation of our nation, um, how are we responding to requests for our OTAPIMSWAC programming? So how do we revitalize our language, our culture, um, the traditions that we have been able to carry throughout these, um, I guess, hundreds of years? And before that question is answered, um, I know that it may be deferred to the um, self-declared authority, meaning Rupert's Land Institute, um, and I'm wondering, because I have, as an educator, have scrutinized the annual reports, and since 2017, uh, Madam President, we've received the same reports verbatim um, today. So I'm wondering, the question is, is what further efforts will be made in the vein of restoring our own language, culture, and traditions? Thank you. Sure. Thank you. So the language, of course, um, we've, we've worked hard to try to get resources to, look, to deal with language. There always has not been resources come to the Métis Nation. There's been um, resources, some have come to Rupert's Land and some have come to Métis Nation. I know because we couldn't access resources ourselves, actually Dan, our, vice, our provincial vice president, has actually sat on language committees with university, with different bodies to ensure that our Machif language and Cree language was included in there. Um, only recently have we, have we received um, resources for language in, at Rupert's Land. And as far as I know, I look at those reports every, I, I, I'm, flabbergasted to think that they've been the same thing every year. I know they, they laid it out and for the first two years we were not able to access the money and that's because governments are slow in getting their resources to us. Mm -hmm. But I will, I will check that again and I will actually speak to the people at Rupert's Land because they are, they are doing work there for sure. Thank you. May I move to my second question? Um, my second question is that um, in the auspices of, um, for example, our investments into post-secondary institutions, um, into the Rupert's Land Center of Métis Research, which is through the University of Alberta, I'm wondering if we can recalibrate our investments of funds into um, further advancing our O to Pimsoac value systems as opposed to carrying out the mandates of the University of Alberta, Native Studies, et cetera, education, which I know a lot of uh, representation um, sits on, but I really think that similar to, I think when we first started this, it was the Rogers or Roberts order. I think that needs to come secondary to our Métis law. And similarly, I think when it comes to education authorities beyond ourselves, that needs to become secondary. And I want to make sure that 
our people have the first and foremost say in how those funds are allocated and how our uh, leadership uh, trajectories towards our shared future on behalf of our ancestors and to the seven generations ahead. Exeamaga. Okay, thanks, uh, Thank Jenna. You. So as you probably are aware, yes, we started out with having relationships with the Faculty of Native Studies. Yep. And from there, we created a body called the Rupert Sland Center for Métis Re Research, which is a partner of the University of Alberta and us. And if you're telling me that you don't think it's working well for us, I will definitely bring that forward, that, that we need to do more work or we need to make it, make it clearer what's happening, because I think that's what I got out of, we should do our own thing. No, 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 no. no. Please don't um, misinterpret because our, um, I remember actually because I, I am a graduate of the University of Alberta myself and I was asked in my graduate program, do you feel like you belong here? And I said, we are the true Canadians. We belong here. This is our campus. Okay. And we de deserve to take on the academic and scholarship that will serve our nation. But when we support the scholarship of any institution that we have, um, you know, MEF relationships with, for example, that needs to be in alignment with our nation and our values and our traditions. And when we invest into any um, over and above uh, investments into these institutions, it needs to absolutely be in um, in alignment with our nation values and traditions as it was prescribed by our predecessors and not by the new, um, I guess, people who are looking to us for direction on how we become uh, coalesced as a people and connected to our roots. Okay, so Maybe I got it wrong, but I think, I, think, I think it's really important, though, that I'm glad you brought it up because we do have not only just an endowment, we have an MOU that says how they're going to work with our students there. And, uh, you know, we, I, I think as far as I understand, we do review that ever so often, but you know what? I will definitely uh, look into that as well because I think it is important that we all work together to make those things work and that it is our you know, it's our piece. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you so much Thanks. for everyone's time. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Mic number one and then mic number three. Uh, good afternoon. My name is uh, Gary Gardner from Region 4. Uh, I'm kind of new at this stuff, so I, I'll probably stutter a little bit. I'm looking at our magazine for the annual report and kind of conspicuous by its absence is Region 4, and I'm just wondering why we don't have a Region 4 in our great magazine here that you have. So Gary, um, what we do with this report is every year, is we send out notices to regional leadership, and of course, this time it's four years later because we know we've all been elected for four years already. We send notices out and ask for reports. Sometimes it's the president that gives it the report, sometimes it's the vice president, sometimes it's a joint effort, and we don't dictate to that. It is up to them. So I think what I, sh I probably want to say to you is I think you need to ask your regional leadership why they don't have a report in. They obviously missed the deadline and didn't get it, and we had to go to print. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mike number one. Mike number three. Uh, in regards to the Region 4 report, our, oh, sorry, Merlene Crossan, Gun Métis local president. Um, in regards to that report, a regional council had asked our vice president, Gary Gagnon, in December to complete the report for this year. So if there's no report, that is the person who's responsible. Uh, our vice president never shows up to meetings, so we have not been able to question him on this. Okay. All right. So we're going to speak to the president's report now. We're not going to get into a debate, so I'm not going to let you up there, Gary, not a chance. Uh, lady, uh, speak to the question on the report, otherwise I'll cut you off. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Dr. Tracy Friedel, I'm the president of Region 4. 
Um, I do want to speak to the report. I do think it's really important, um, I guess, first of all, let me say um, about Jenna and the comments she just made, I thought those were really inspiring and it's, um, it's exciting to see youth really, you know, really being engaged on these topics and I think the questions she put forward are really important ones. Um, I'm also glad we put over the, you know, the resolution and the report till after lunch. I noticed our elder, Angie Crer, who we care about so much, she had been standing in that lunch line for over 20 minutes um, prior to that adjournment. Um, but in, in terms of the report itself, you know, legal uh, lawsuits that the m is involved with are really critical to include. Um, I also noticed the absence of the Justice, uh, Madam, Madam Justice Ho decision, which is a very substantive, substantive loss for the m and in terms of um, a desire to be seen as the only organization that can represent Métis rights and be consulted as well. So I think that should have been in there. On the other matter, um, which is, you know, obviously alleged, um, you know, matters and that type of thing, and, and it does name both the president and the m and um, and I heard the president say, sometimes these things go away. I, I think we're just seeing, in, in, for example, with Hockey Canada, um, how these things go away, and I just would um, urge that, you know, these things become very transparent to the members because they're very critical, so thank you. Hi, hi. Um, is it okay, can I respond? Yes, ma'am, if you wish. So I do want to respond to that and uh, why I said things go away. This very individual who now has, has filed a lawsuit and it's, it's there, probably a month prior, submitted us a lawsuit and never filed it. And it did go away because he didn't, he didn't file it in time. We do have the very same person coming back and filing another one. Uh, some people haven't been served as yet. I certainly have been served. And Métis Nation of Alberta was served. And I was personally served at home. But there's about five other people on that lawsuit. And at least I know of two that have not been served as yet. So that's why I said that. And that's why I didn't bring it forward. Hope that clarifies it. And, um, as a, and as a chair, one of the things I won't allow is, because this is before the courts, I won't allow any answers in terms of any questions directly related to that, only because it would be totally unfair uh, uh, to, uh, to the person that needs to answer that. Okay, we're going to continue now. We've got two people at mic number two, and then I believe that's it, and then we're going to go call for a vote. Mic number two. Hi. Um, my name's Hannah Nash. I'm the chairperson for the Provisional Youth Council for the Métis Nation of Alberta. And I'm also, I was previously in the position, position of Region 4 Youth Representative um, for the Métis Nation of Alberta. And I just wanted to say that from, on behalf of the Youth Council, we just want to honour Gary Gagnon for his work and for the way that he treats the youth, the way that he honours the youth, the way he respects the youth, and the way he carries himself in our community. And I just want to make that clear so thank you everybody okay. thank you okay are you standing up for mic number two are you for the report or against the report that's what we're talking about uh it's part of the report yeah so i want to ask uh about uh, the youth and special needs for like uh fasd and stuff like that my daughter is is uh one of the lead counselors in region in in local red year 497 uh we we set out a couple years ago with the help with our Region 3 president. And, you know, the Métis Nation has is, is, is met and done, done some dealing with them, but they kind of drag in their feet, and it's been almost two years for, I think, their second meeting and stuff. The hardest part about FASD in Central Alberta with our population in, in, in Red Deer is about 5,000. Um, uh, about 30% of those kids don't have funding for psychologists. Uh, um, you know, assessments and stuff like that. And it's very, very, very expensive. Uh, it ranges about $5,000 per kid. Um, I just, <laughs> it's sad that we stand and we say about all this, what we do for kids, but we're leaving a big part of them behind. 
And I think the, the Métis Nation has fallen well below par when it comes to that. Um, we should be looking at resources, uh, psych psych psychologists that can do these assessments in a timely manner because these kids, they don't go, if they don't get their assessments, they're dumped on the streets or they're dumped into a home and they end up becoming criminals and, and end up in jail and, and uh, we've lost two kids in the last few months um, to suicide and, and, and stuff like that. So. I was just wondering, you know, in, in your in your report, you say we do so much for kids and stuff, but I think we're we're missing out on the big part of the kids that are suffering, and they don't get the help. Okay, thank you very much for bringing that forward. And I I just want to say to you that there has been t years when we've been able to get clear resources to help, but again, I'm going to say that's exactly where, what I was saying this morning in my report. Sometimes we can only get what governments offer to us. Grant funds or whatever that we can do certain things with and then the next year they cut it off. And that's why I'm saying to you that we have to start being responsible and, and be able to control what is the, is the need, what are the priorities for ourselves. Um, I, I will bring that back. We do have a children's service unit, and I know they ha they've done some things in FASD. If there's anything more we can do, I will, t I will have a discussion with them and, t and go forward to see if there's whatever else we can push on to do for you. Thank you for bringing that. Thank you. Mic number four. Hello, I'm Nadia Burke from Region 4. Uh, I just want to make a couple recommendations regarding the resolution on the Constitution, just some recommendations from our So family. I wonder if we could just hold off, because that's going to be the next discussion, and once we start that, you can come up to the mic and you can make as many recommendations as you'd like. But right now we're dealing with the President's report, so if you're in favor of it or against it... Oh, okay. Maybe she yeah. wasn't here when okay. Maybe she wasn't here when you separated. Uh, mic number two. Yeah. Tyson Jerome from Region 3. Um, I just wanted to, I guess, get a clarification for some of the confusion that might have happened um, before lunch. Um, whether the Constitution and moving that forward is being included in this motion to no. pass the President's no, report. We, uh, you may have missed it earlier. We said they're, they're going to be separated. So now we're dealing just with the President's report. That's why I told the young lady that okay. the, that next motion, resolution, is going to be coming up right after this. So okay. you'll have plenty of time to talk to it then if you'd like to speak to it. Sure, thank okay. you. If there's no more, uh, oh, mic number one. Mic number one. Question. Question. Question's been called. All in favor of accepting the report, please raise your hand. Those opposed? Those abstained? Motion's carried. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, like we said, now we're going to continue on with that, with that motion that we had previously that had been submitted. It had been moved and seconded, so I'm going to accept it still, and now we're going to continue to have the discussion. Now, Carmen was up on mic number three, so she's going to be first to go, and then anybody else, as you, as you come up, will recognize you then. So this is speaking to this one resolution. Now, I'm not sure if they have it on screen. Are you guys able to put it on screen so people can see? All right, put it on screen. It was also circulated on right, and it's also been circulated on the floor as well. So maybe what we'll do is we'll just go to the second page with the whereases, because that's basically the direction that's being put forward, is in the whereases, and the therefore be it resolved. So the whereases provide a direction to say, hey, look, this is our policy direction, our inherent right, this and that, right? And then the Therefore, be it resolved, those are the directions, the policy direction coming forward. So there's basically A, B, C, D, through four directives coming out of this. So that's what we'll be speaking to. Mike, number three. Thanks, Bruce. Uh, it, to your uh, mention about the actual resolution, uh, we're looking for ratification, which means at this point there will be no further drafts. Am I correct? It's going to go to the special... Uh, session to vote on, is that correct? So I can't answer that myself, but what I would do is, is there anybody from the commission that can come join us up here to answer some of these questions? Uh, and then that way we've got the dialogue and we've got the people in the know up here as well.
So basically the question was, is there going to be an opportunity to uh, edit this document that's going forward or is this the final draft? So I'm not sure who uh, up here is going to, uh, to answer it, but I'd, I'd ask for them to uh, also uh, uh, put out their name uh, for the purposes of uh, the recording secretary as well. So I'll turn it over to you to answer that question. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my name is Travis Inkster, and I am one of the commissioners on the Constitution Commission. So the question is, uh, is this the draft that is being, will there be any changes to this draft for the uh, ratification vote? So what we're proposing is that we've uh, spent many, many months, work, uh, went to many, many communities, heard from hundreds of people, and tried to incorporate everything that we had heard, the spirit of what we heard, into this draft. So we're proposing this draft as the one that goes forward for all citizens to be able to vote whether they, uh, they approve of this draft or not. So the short answer is we don't propose any more changes to it. This is what we would go. I also just quickly, there was I think a question before lunch about when was it released, just to respond to that quickly if I may. Um, the, this draft of the Constitution and the What We Heard document, which is a fairly extensive document describing what we heard, how we tried to incorporate it into this Constitution, were posted uh, online for citizens to review on July 26th, which is why the, the uh, documents are dated that way. Okay, thanks, Travis. Um, that's all well and good. Um, like I noted, I have lots of pages and notes, but I'm going to try and summarize as best I can. Um, I'm finding this whole process not meaningful consultation. And the reason I say that is because a process was created. I don't know if it was vetted or if any of the m &A citizens had an opportunity to provide comment on what consultation should look like. Um, there was public engagement, however, what have we done, two drafts perhaps in a couple of years? And this is supposedly our most important document for the nation and we're, we've done two drafts and are rushing it through. Um, I feel there's so many questions still that need to be answered and <clears throat> fair enough, a lot of the uh, comments yesterday was deemed out of scope. And I use quotation marks because I find that a very colonial term. Out of scope is only used by government and industry when they don't want to talk about things that are difficult for them to define and put in a box. So I find that surprising as a Métis nation how one of our important aspects of a community is that we talk and we discuss and we try and get away from the colonial mindset, but we're using out of scope on a regular basis for this consultation. Um, there's many questions I have that are out of scope, and they're, they're not addressed in the Constitution. So the hope is that they will be addressed with consultation with this implementation committee that is not clear what their mandate is, what their terms of reference is, uh, what their consultation will be. Uh, none of that has been discussed. There's been no call to any of the citizens on what they would like to see for consultation. Maybe that's coming, but I find this was not meaningful consultation. And the fact that I see so many people yesterday with so many questions that were deemed out of scope or this is something we'll discuss later uh, again, I feel like I'm talking to an industry proponent because you hear that a lot. Um, <clears throat> there is a lot of things that I notice, and I also uh, noticed that I had to do a lot of digging. So within the Constitution, it discusses the Métis Government Recognition and Self-Government Agreement. 
there's so many pieces in there that I didn't really hear about all that often. And all of this constitutional work links back to the MGRSA. And I haven't heard of that document. I had to do digging. Um, and there's lots of linkages back to that document. So one of the triggers is to have a ratified constitution. And then the next is to create a transition plan, then to create enabling laws, which is the, the government, the Métis Nation, determining what those laws will be to create this self-government. I don't know what that looks like. And how are those enabling laws going to be determined? Who is deciding what those enabling laws look like? Because I imagine those are going to have a huge impact on everyone in this room, if not more. And we know nothing about them. There's also the fiscal financial agreement within the MGRSA, which I've heard nothing about. And just from <clears throat> Jason Madden's brief comment that this agreement is going to have a lot to do with possibly industry agreements that already exist with other communities. So what does that mean? So we're agreeing to a constitution that is not clarifying any of these other bigger pieces that are going to have a huge impact on the communities. And I don't want to hear out of scope. I want us to have real discussions about this. I have many, many more, but I think I've kind of said what I need to say in a roundabout way. Thank you. So just before I get them to answer or if they, if they want to add to a, a response to what you're saying, I just want to clarify for everybody at the mics, just so you know I've been watching you. So number three is speaking right now. Then we're going to go to mic number two. Then we're going to go to mic number one. Then mic number four. Then mic number four again. Then mic number three. And then mic number two. Okay, just so you're aware of it. Right, and then mic number one again. All right, so are you going to respond? Is anybody from here going to respond to uh, the remarks? Point of, order. That's mic four. point of order, mic four. What's your point of order? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Brian Hamlin, Southern Free Métis Territory. What does that mean, by the way? Can you explain to the crowd? Because if, I'm, if I don't know what you mean, maybe some of the people in the crowd want to know what you mean either. So can you explain that as well? Mr. Chairman, we passed the motion to accept the agenda. We have an ordinary resolution on the floor completely out of order because we have a spot for resolutions after the Vice President's report, the Secretary's report, the Treasurer Lawrence Gervais Auditor's report, and then the resolutions. Sure. Is that your That's point? why we adopt Robert's Rules of Order, Is so we run our meetings properly and efficiently. Is that your point of order? I dismiss it then because it's irrelevant. We're going to go back to this conversation now. That mo okay, so that was mic number four, so uh, we'll take one off there. So anyways, back to uh, mic number two. Well, should we respond? Unless somebody's going to respond to Carmen's... Yeah, please. I, I'd yeah. love some kind of response. So, so I'll, I'll begin. Uh, to Travis Inkster with the, the commission. Um, so I just want to talk a little bit about the, that, the first point that you made about um, the meaningful consultation. Just describe uh, what we did. And, and I just want to share that so that people do know. Uh, we began by drafting a version of the Constitution uh, when we first came together using many, many uh, previous uh, uh, consultations that happened. And in the video we watched yesterday, uh, we saw some of them described, but there's, there's been many sort of workshops, many uh, consultations that have happened over the years uh, to ask people what they are looking for in the Constitution. So we used a lot of those resources to come up with an initial draft and then we brought it out to the, to, uh, the existing structures that we have under our, our government today. So we had an, a series of roundtables with uh, the, each of the regions, with uh, the different uh, groups, including the elders, the judicial group, the uh, women's group. And um, that's not all encompassing. I'm, I'm missing some, but, but we had these roundtables that were really designed to hear what they liked about our first draft and what 
was what we could improve on with the first draft. So we used that information and created a, a what we heard, and then we created a second draft. That second draft is the one that we uh, went out to all of the communities and had gatherings, not all of the communities, many of the communities, and we had gatherings and uh, we had hearings, we invited people to give us feedback um, online, by letters, we received a great deal of input. Um, hundreds of very uh, distinctive, very, very meaningful recommendations. So we incorporated that into this, our third draft. So that, that's what this one is, is the third draft. We also heard many things um, that people wanted, that people cared about and were interested in, um, that didn't really fit into the Constitution, but they would be very appropriate for laws or they're very important considerations that we as a nation, we as the Métis Nation within Alberta need to be thinking about as we transition to, uh, to this. So, so we uh, prepared two documents, uh, one for the transition committee and one uh, for the lawmakers. And uh, um, just, I think there was, I think in part of the question was, uh, uh, who's going to make these, these laws? So they'll be drafted by, uh, a group of lawyers that include people within the Métis Nation. Uh, and this is outside of the scope of the commission, so I should be, uh, maybe I shouldn't even be speaking to it, but uh, as I do understand it, they, they would be uh, ultimately approved by the Provincial Council, which is our governing body. Um, there were many other aspects to your questions, so I, I don't know if other commissioners want to speak to those. Okay. So, thanks for those questions, Carmen. I know Yesterday, we said it's out of the terms of reference for the commission, and that was exactly what um, Travis said. Many of those issues that were raised over time, we we've have the transition and we have the enabling document. So this is my understanding of it. The MGRSA, and you're right, people had to go and look within the website to be able to download the MGRSA. And I know that during our um, engagements, um, actually, it was probably me at every one of them that encouraged people to go and download that because at that time, it was to have been part of the accept, uh, ratification process. That's changed since, like we heard yesterday and we heard this morning, that that won't be part of it. But under the MGRSA, one of the the way that I understand it, the larger agreement has those various components, the finan fiscal financing, the uh, transition plan, and, and a requirement of the, ena the enabling laws piece will be for us to do that transition from the societies to the constitution. So the way that I understand it, the MGRSA is the larger document, the constitution is only one component of that. So the terms of reference for us takes us to the piece until the Constitution is ratified. Any of those other pieces, and indeed, it's not gonna be me that responds to it because I don't even know what the, the transition committee's terms of reference are. Uh, that didn't come to us as a commission. Uh, Provincial Council actually is the one that I would imagine dealt with it. So somebody else is gonna to need to respond to that. I can't speak to that. The fiscal financing, we can't speak to either because like I said, we're only one of the components that have to uh, be met under the MGRSA. So I apologize if we can't answer those because we're not the body that has the answers. Okay. Thank you. So Carmen? So, so what we're going Carmen. to... Uh, oh, did, did you want to yeah. So okay. Carmen, I too want to say that so as far as the transition committee, there was a resolution passed last year to put that, commi that committee in place. We talked about it yesterday, but I know not everyone was here. So that, that committee was put into place with um, myself and Vice President Dan Cardinal and two citizens appointed by each region. That has been in place. They have met, but only once because they really can't do a lot until they know what our constitution is going to look like. Like, well, how, do you, how do you transition to something if you don't know what it looks like? So that's same thing with, um, the same thing with the enabling laws. 
We have, of course, our rights lawyers who have done a lot of work on us on the self-government agreement and everything else. And actually, we have a lot of citizens, lawyers, that have reached out to us to say we're ready to help with that. So we have a group that, that can get on that. But that, too, can't happen until they know what they're making laws about. Um, the, the fiscal financing arrangement part, we started that as an interim fiscal financing arrangement in order to get the money to hold events like this, to be able to support our citizens to come to, whether that was the gatherings, the consultation gatherings on, on the Constitution, whether that was hiring researchers to do work that when people ask us questions that we needed to do, all of that kind of stuff, to support the commissioners, all of that. We are now, and that was, that was approved and we have the money to do all that. We are now, and I'm part of that, I'm part of that. We are, we are now negotiating, saying as we know what our government's going to look like, we want to make sure we negotiate enough money. If it's decided that it's going to be five bodies, then we want to make sure. If it's going to be 20, we want to make sure that we negotiate enough for that and everything else that we want to do. So that's in the process, but it's not finished by no means. So I just wanted to kind of give you an idea on some of those. And it's not that we don't want to, we don't want to do it. It's like, that's how it, it seems that we're always stopped by that. There's certain things we can't do until there's a structure to do it with. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Um, I just have a final comment and then I'll step away because I know it can only come to the mic twice. Um, thank you very much for your responses. Uh, I do appreciate it. And I know that you know you have done engagement, uh, but a perfect example of what I think would be meaningful consultation and is even just the draft yesterday. Why didn't we get a red line version so I could know what's new and what's old, so I wasn't looking through five different files to figure out what was new and what wasn't. And there was an, you know, a high-level review of that, but it was all very high-level yesterday. I still wasn't clear. Uh, the slide with the umbrella with Ontario and BC and Saskatchewan, none of that was clear. There wasn't enough detail for people to understand what was going on. Um, and I hear what you're saying, President Pontius, that you know, we're not there yet, we need this constitution in order to move ahead with these, I'm gonna call them working groups because we're gonna have an implementation commission, et cetera, et cetera. But why do we have to fit within that box? Why can't we go outside of that box and start having those conversations with the committee that's just been created and say, what would you like to see? Instead of waiting for some lines from a constitution, why can't we go from this with a ground root, grassroots perspective? People want to tell you what they want to see in all of this and give us a chance. And I know we've done that with the What We Heard document, but you're going to take that information, and I say this with IK as well, you're going to take that information, uh, use it possibly out of context to fit what needs to go into the document. So I'd like to know, are you going to create a draft of these, in, these laws? Are you going to get a draft and get responses back? I, that's what meaningful consultation is, is keeping everyone in the loop, keeping everyone engaged, hearing responses. And I know you did you know, some, some formal engagement, but it's not enough. Not for something like this. This is a huge piece in history, and it needs to be done properly. Thanks. Thank you, mic number three. Uh, mic number two, identify yourself for the uh, recorder. Diana Carr, Region 4. I've sat here for a good part of the morning listening to how <clears throat> you are here for the Métis community and our people. Our elders are still in need of food, housing, and medicine. Our children need help in housing and proper the representations in the court and in the medical field as in the mental and the drug abuse. Our youth are falling through the cracks in the system and we look to the white government who does not help the Métis. This is not self-government. It's letting the government repeat the lies and the hurt as we watch from repeated history. Things are not functioning well. 
it is not clear how this constitution will improve things if passed fast. <clears throat> it's got to improve. We need it to improve. Rushing this is not going to make it. We need to all come together. Thank you. Thank you. Mic number one. Good afternoon. My name is Melanie Morrow and I'm from Region 3. Um, many of you, we've been discussing um, the engagement sessions that have taken place in regards to the Constitution. Um, I took a look at the citizens' engagement report that was uh, published on the 26th of July, 2022. And I took note that within those 19 engagement sessions that the MNA held, only 589 people were engaged in those, in those discussions. I just want to point out that in the Métis Nation of Alberta, we have approximately 5,300 members and 53,000, sorry, <laughs> um, not, not 100. Anyways, 53,000 members and 589 people is less than 2% of that membership. And so I am just, um, I just wanted to point that out. And I would argue that less than 2% of our membership being consulted and offering their suggestions, their feedback on a document that is going to impact us for years to come is not adequate. Thank you. Mic number one. Mic number, was there a, were you wanting a response? No. No? Okay. Uh, mic number four. Hello. Uh, Nadia Burke from Region 4. So I just wanted to make uh, it clear and just clarify that I fully support the need for a constitution. Uh, everyone in our family supports that. Um, but I think we need to review the structure of our current commission to make sure it is more representative of the 53,000 members across this province. Um, I would like to recommend that we strike, strike two additional committees. One, uh, a committee be struck to specifically develop laws, acts, bills, policy, and the orders of administration needed to implement a constitution including a Métis-specific charter of rights and freedoms, which is something that all constitutions must have. And a second committee um, to review the draft um, that came out eight business days ago, um, the OTPEMSWAC Métis governance draft. Uh, I think we need to have 12 members on each committee, geographically and representative of, of all of our members across this province with several meetings held within each committee, at least six. We realize that this commission, and I want to acknowledge the work the commission has done, the good work, um, but I realize we, you want to press this forward, but a federal election is not going to be called until at least 2025. So we do have time to get this right, Time to get this through the House of Commons for approval through the Senate. So I'm respectfully requesting that we consider making our commission, the structure of it, more representative with two more committees across Alberta and that, you know, the, these committees are representative of all of our members. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Any response? No? Okay. Uh, mic number three. Hi there, my name is Troy Stuke, uh, Region 3, Local 87. And I've got sort of three points. The first is around what I've observed and the discussions and the disagreements around um, the timing of the Constitution. And I see it a little bit like uh, when cell phones were being considered. Um, none of us knew that we needed them. And, and then all of a sudden we couldn't get them fast enough. 
what is happening right now with the Constitution is the groundwork is being built, like fiber optic and satellites. If we sit around and disagree about should we have landlines or should we have you know, an in-person session, we're missing the point. We need the foundation that will jettison to where we need to go. So that's the first piece. The second piece is around what I expect. What I expect of myself is that I will bring this information to my family, to my kin. Many of them cannot be here. They're working full time. They're ill. They're caring for young children. They're disabled. They cannot be here. It's my responsibility to spread the news, to um, get them the information, to have the conversations, to encourage them to vote when the time comes, which will be available for all the citizens. That's my responsibility. When I think about what the responsibility is of the MNA, it's to bring in experts to do that writing. I'm not a legal writer. I don't want to be a part of that. I'm retired. <laughs> I'm not going to sit and expect to be a part of those discussions, but I expect the MA to listen. Um, I'm still very new to understanding um, Metis consultation processes, but I've worked my career 40 years in colonial um, consultation and engagement. And this is by far the most robust engagement experience that I've ever lived. <laughs> and the third piece is around um, um, my, my hopes. I hope that we all can respect the many um, pieces, and I know that the ground walls were set out here, but um, really the, the, the timing issue is significant. I um, have watched in my previous career as a social worker the pace of social change, and it is excruciatingly slow. But there are windows, and if we do not act during those windows, we lose it. And I've seen that um, in family violence, in disabilities, um, all of the legislation. It's never perfect. It's never perfect. Um, it's 80% right, in my opinion, and the other 20% is not wrong. It could be great, but it's not wrong. So I fully support the direction of the work of the commission, and I thank you for your attention. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Mic number two, Jeff. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. First of all, I want to uh, premise uh, or preface my comments uh, to the commission. And uh, I blame myself because I got notice when, when the commission was coming around for a consultation. And, and, and if I chose not to engage myself into that, that's my fault. Secondly, I want to stress that we got to start somewhere. This is a good starting point for us to get, uh, get away from the Societies Act and be Otepim <clears throat> Soak. I'm only discouraged by one point, and, and I would ask the Commission to, to review that or reconsider that point. And because there's a lot of a lot of issues around some of the uh, uh, language and context in, in the uh, in the document, but if we can have an amending formula that can uh, uh, that can uh, reflect uh, those uh, those disagreements, and and because I, I I just wanted to quote uh, one guy there. He said, "If we go down that road with this car." And if we have a flat tire or run out of gas, and we can't fix it, it on for five years. 
let's put an amending formula in there that it's reviewed on a yearly basis so that we make sure we go down that road in the right way. Thank you. Thank you, mic number two. Mic number one, Mel. Melanie Oman Hill, Region 4. Uh, so I had talked to the mover and the seconder prior to returning from lunch, and I'm asking that there be a friendly amendment made under the first therefore clause, where it says the province-wide ratification vote, and what we should add right behind the word vote is by ballot, including online or by mail, in brackets, so that we clearly have it that this will be as broad a ratification process as it possibly can be. Okay, Mel, thank you for that. I'm going to go back to the movers and the seconders to see if they're willing to make that friendly amendment. Uh, the mover, are you willing to make that amendment? I'm here, yes, Lisa Weber. I wholeheartedly accept that very good recommendation. Seconder? Karen Collins, absolutely. Perfect. So we have an amended resolution. And so, no, uh, uh, so what we're going to do with this friendly amendment is we're going to include it just in the whole vote. We're not going to vote on the amendment and we're not going to vote on the whole ro resolution like that. One of the things we've been doing as part of our Métis law, and it's not Robert's Rules of Order, but the Métis laws we've been doing, is we've been doing it that way. We've made the changes and then we've gone to a vote on it, rather than voting on the changes and then voting on, 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 on the next piece of it. That's what's called self-government. That's our inherent right. And we've been doing that for so many years here. So I'm going to continue with that. So uh, now that you're aware of it, at the on the first, therefore, after the word vote, ballot online or by mail. Add that to it. So that's to expand the opportunities for, uh, for people to vote. Okay, so that was done, uh, Mel. Uh, mic number four. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not opposed to that amendment either. Um, I don't think it addresses, though, the core problems with the resolution itself. And um, again, I think Carmen made some really good points. Sorry, my name's Tracy Ferdell, Region 4. Um, made some good points around meaningful consultation. And um, I think what's happened here with this constitution development is um, anything but meaningful consultation. Because, you know, whilst there are, I think, less than 1% of the folks who attended some kind of a consultation engagement meeting, um, the communities, the locals, the regions themselves didn't do their own engagement. And um, many of you are aware of this, you know, this constitution proposes to radically alter, you know, the map. Um, there's many, many unknowns and that type of thing. So unfortunately, I don't think the amendment actually um, addresses the core problems in the, constitu in the constitution or in the uh, resolution, I should say. Um, I'll just remind everybody of the Trans Mountain expansion because I'm sure you're all aware of it. And so the federal government um, approved that, you know, that project back in 2016. Um, and, you know, and it was challenged in court by First Nations following that. And eventually the, you know, certificate was quashed by the Federal Court of Appeal due to the lack of meaningful consultation. And the... The federal court said that you, you know, it's not simply good enough to come out and sort of uh, get your notepad out, listen to people, um, you know, kind of put off their comments, we can't address that, we can't address this, and not really um, listen to the, that, you know, that feedback, um, and also, you know, demonstrate where you have incorporated changes as a result of that feedback. None of that's happened here. I would suggest that this constitution should it pass you know pass muster to go out for a vote is actually open to challenge from communities locals and regions and that type of thing um, I would also I'm not sure how many of you here are aware of you know that these problems with consultation with the MA are systemic they go back to you know 2014 at least when the regional consultation protocol agreements were first um, the conversations around those were initiated. There were many regions and locals were not even, 
engaged in those. These agreements were put in front of folks and they were asked to sign them. Um, and then, of course, some have not signed them. This is really the substance of the Madam Justice Ho decision of January 4th of this year, uh, where she draws attention to some of these issues and that communities and locals and regions are not on board um, with what the m and is saying. Here again is another, another example of that here today. So again, I would suggest if this moves forward, it's probably open to challenge. And the other, let's just put the elephant in the room um, right here. There's a number of communities that have already left the m and due to these systemic issues. There are likely a number more communities that will leave the MA due to these issues. And so you can plow ahead and, you know, go ahead and do this, but it's, it's uh, to, to what end? I would ask folks here, to what end is that? Um, the other thing I was going to say is, you know, right now the federal government is looking at implementing UNDRIP, the United Nations Declaration on the Rights to Indigenous Peoples. There's something in UNDRIP called Free Prior Informed Consent. There's many good articles. I would suggest folks read that. Um, this does not in any way align. These processes that were followed here does not in any way align with those articles either. And, you know, increasingly the federal government is working with Indigenous folks to co-develop, co-develop policy, co-develop a number of different things. Um, the, the process here is anything but co-development. It's happened largely behind the scenes, largely without the awareness of folks. Um, it comes forward in, in these documents. There were only, you know, a, maybe a week. Most people didn't even know it was put up online. Most people came yesterday in earnest. They didn't know that their feedback was not gonna affect any change on this draft constitution. And so all of it, in my mind, is um, a mistake. And so lastly, I would say, I, I've heard folks, and I've heard this in other contexts as well, say, we have to get this done. You know, the government's going to change. We have. So on the one hand, we're saying, you know, we're our own people. We're our own government, and, you know, they're not, we don't need to, we can make our own sort of direction. We can decide our own things. On the other, oh, we, the government's going to have an election. We need to get this done. We need to get this done. That sort of fear-mongering I don't think is helpful at all. It's, it's almost coercive in a way, and it, it's wrong. I think, we, I think we need to stop doing that. And so, <laughs> lastly, sorry, that was my second last one. And lastly, um, you know, I've worked with many elders over the years, and I, I really honor, you know, what they say. And, and one of the things I've learned from elders is that the right time, it, when is the right time is when, when it's the right time. It's not because we need to get it done now, it's we need to get it done when it's done right. And so I would really urge everybody here to really encourage that, thank you. Mic number two. Dr. Adam Browning, and the president of Lethbridge and Area. I wanna agree with the sentiment and thank the two who were receptive to the amendment. We need more of that. If we had that to be able to take this of what some people are calling a functional or 80% document, we'd be in a better place. So I thank the two for accepting you know, an amendment to this. It'd be nice if we applied that to the whole thing, the concept. I'm gonna agree with the sentiment that there's still some core issues here. Here's one of the statements that was made earlier um, that provincial councils get their direction from our members. So I'm the president of a local council. I have many people from Lethbridge who were sleeping two to a room, three to a room to come here unpaid. I have not gotten a single direction from anyone in my community that this is something that needs to go forward from what they've seen on July the 26th. Not one. It has not come from a vote from my council. However, what has come as a vote from my council is to put letters forward saying we haven't been meaningfully engaged and that we wanted a constitution in Lethbridge, third biggest city in the province, or a, a consultation session. Never happened. Here is a fact. I get my direction from you. You're the members. The regional council 
gets its direction from local presidents who form that council. You know, I have our secretary of our regional council here. I think she could attest. We've never voted on this. We've never voted to endorse this. So it's an incomplete direction. I urge you and I respect the, the, the dialogue and conversation and the thought from our members about this. I think it's been really thoughtful. I appreciate the way the chair has allowed an order. I encourage you all. This is our chance. It's unprecedented. It's our chance to do it right. Let's, let's vote this down. Thank you. Okay, we have two more speakers. We have mic number three and then mic number one. Great. Hi, everyone. Uh, Kate Gillis, Region 3. Um, I'm born and raised in Calgary, so it's so great to see you all here today. Um, I have a couple points to make. Uh, first and foremost, I'm a policy analyst with the federal government, so you guys can shit talk me later, but um, <laughs> they... <laughs> Uh, when we develop policies, they do not take anything less than perfection. And I think we have to hold ourselves to that same standard um, because this is the most important document we've ever come across. So why would we expect anything less? Um, the second point I'd like to make, um, just on terms of consultation, um, it really, I think, was relevant this morning in everybody's opening statements when... Um, all the um, provincial organizations were talking about how uh, we have to encourage youth engagement. And I would just like to say, if that is the case, we have to work on youth consultation for this constitution. Um, and speaking on behalf of the youth that are all sitting at the front, um, that has not been done thus far. So we're missing a key voice, and this, is, this arguably affects us more than it affects anybody else in this room. So I'll leave it there. Thank you. Mic number three. Mic number one, and then we're going to, uh, to uh, oh, there's going to be a response here. Hello. Um, Hang on there, mic number one. They just want to have a response oh. to that. Uh, um, thank you for your comments. We did have a roundtable with the Youth Council, just for your information. Okay. Uh, mic number one, and then mic number one again. Okay. Oh. Hi, my name is Oraletti, Region 2, and I wanted to speak in favor of this motion. And as I've been sitting here today, I'm so happy to see all these people here, both young and our elders. And there's this space of need for change that I can see in the whole room. I can hear it. We are talking about how we don't like the system we're under, but yet we are handed something that could change that, and we're trying to figure out if we should move forward or not. We can't figure out the laws. We can't figure out the transition until we accept this. How are we to create the change we are all looking for if we can't take the first step forward? There are still... <laughs> despite your fears, despite some of those timings that are not super comfortable, there are still ways and moments that we can change this. Everything we put forward, we can edit, but we can't edit it once we, um, unless we start trying it out until we see the laws that come out of this, until we see how that transition works. Unless we move forward, what is this? What is a constitution even mean to us? And if we can't even accept a constitution, how do we expect to make our own laws? Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, mic number one again. Uh, Aaron Barner, Region 4. Um, I speak in favor of the motion and some of the comments that we're hearing today and in particular from some of the people that you know, proclaim to be some of the most educated people in the room. And some of them even went as far as yesterday to say some people in this room don't understand at the same level as them and that are at a junior high level. They don't even understand this resolution. If you don't like the resolution, don't vote for it. If you don't like the Constitution, vote no for it at the referendum. This resolution is about going to a referendum. 
It's not putting the Constitution Commission on trial. It's not putting the Constitution on trial. It's about letting people go and have a vote at a referendum, period. Thank you. Thank you. Mic number three, and then mic number four, then mic number two. And three. Thank you. Mic, mic number three. Hi, thank you. I think I had my turn skip, but that's okay. I learned a lot in the process. Uh, I just wanted to talk about my understanding, and if you guys can correct me at, um, at the front table there uh, when it comes to this. I had my concerns yesterday after the full day um, on the fact that every time there was kind of a discrepancy and how are we going to move forward, there was the response of, well, that has to be articulated in law. Well, that has to be articulated in law. So I'm just wondering um, if we can, I guess, clarify that understanding for everyone in the room to know that, number one, this has to be broad enough so that we don't put ourselves in a trap of getting, you know, $5 treaty money every year um, and so that it can advance as we so too as the true Canadians. Um, and secondly, that there will be um, room for all of us to contribute to what those laws are, how they're articulated, how they're followed, and how they're managed within the Constitution. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Um, thank you for the question. And so I'll just reiterate... Because I really do believe, I mean, this is all very new to all of us, including we, Métis, who are on the commission, the Constitution Commission. But what an opportunity there is before us. And so when we think, and as we have said at each one of our 1922 engagements, engagements in every region over the last two and a half years, engagement with every affiliate, engagements online, there has been very significant engagement determined by us and participated in by us. The Constitution, one of the messages we have consistently said over the two and a half years is our Constitution is our Constitution. And if you think about it as our solid foundation from which we will build our nation and our laws according to how we see ourselves and what works for us. And so if you think about, for example, the Canadian Constitution has a clause in it that says that the federal government has jurisdiction over banking. The Constitution of Canada does not then proceed in the banking provision to lay out all the rules and legislation about banking. It just says you have the authority as the government to make laws about banking. And so similarly, please, when you read the Constitution, when we say we have the jurisdiction to determine how our government will be formed, that's us saying how it will be formed. When we say there will be a law that's developed, that's because we haven't said how that bank is going to run. We have said we recognize that we need to set out our own laws according to how our structures, how we will govern ourselves. We recognize that that is necessary, and that is work to come. How those laws look, though, absolutely. I mean, and we've said it repeatedly. We don't have, that is not, number one, a very narrow approach that that is not within the scope of our work. I know scope is a dirty word today. But nonetheless, that's not the job of this Constitution to, to draft legislation. It's an important job, and it needs to be approached carefully. It needs to be supported. And we have had uh, several Métis lawyers uh, throughout the province put their names forward. We'd have had non-lawyers put their names forward and say, we want to help. And that other information that has been tabulated includes identifying these are the areas of the law, policy, regulations, what have you, that need to be developed according to the way we wish to govern ourselves and govern our society. And so that work is yet to be done, but that detail, like I said, it has not been worked out. And I absolutely understand we're expecting ourselves to take a pretty significant, huge leap of faith to move away from a provincial system that we've been governed under for 100 and some years, probably. 
Um, but we need to do so, and, and that does mean, it's not gonna be perfect right off the bat, but how our laws look need to be driven by us and according to our process. And so that is very important work that needs to be done. And I realize that perhaps we don't always have the best confidence in ourselves to do so because we have not had that opportunity, but we have the opportunity. Can you turn on the mic? Thank you. All right, uh, we're gonna go to mic number four now, and then mic number two, and then mic number two again, and then ultimately to mic number three. So mic number four. Hi, Camelia Ridsdale, Region 6. I'd like to speak in favor of the motion. Um, when I initially saw the first draft of the Constitution, I can honestly say I felt the same way as a lot of people who are expressing concerns here today. Like my knee-jerk reaction was, OMG, this needs a lot of work. And literally, that's how I felt. Um, I was involved in the engagements, and our commission has put in a lot of work. There has been a lot of changes. They have been listening. Not to say that every single thing in the Constitution is going to please everybody. Like, I think everybody has reservations here today just because of the unknown. But we are literally looking at the skeleton of our government. All of everything else, the functions, the, all the meat, all that good stuff, that's going to be put in here at a later time. I feel like our ancestors, the people who came before us, the people that work 30 years, and they're not here anymore today. I'm sorry, I'm... I get emotional, but like they put their whole life into working on this process and getting our government to move forward. And I think that that's the position we're in today. Like we have to take the opportunity to move forward. Like it's an opportunity for us to further the steps of what the people that came before us, all the work that they've done, you know, the people who literally put their lives into it. Like my aunt was here for, you know, 40 some years and she passed away, she's not gonna see this, but we will and our kids are going to experience it. Even all the good things that are already happening for our youth, for our elders. Yeah, there's a lot of work to be done, but we can't stop it here. I liked what the young lady said over there about we can't let fear hold us back. Like now's the opportunity. The, I don't know, how do you word it? The time is right with the government, with us. Like we can't wait for it to be 100% perfect for the federal government. It has to be perfect for us, for the Métis, for the ones who have been fighting for this, who want this to move forward, for us to have our own government. Like it, this is our life-changing opportunity to be our own government, have our own constitution, have our own laws, take everything into our own hands. We think about health, we think about the finances, like that's the stuff that scares us, but that will come. I'm sorry, ma'am, there's probably a lot of people who disagree with me, and like I have my own reservations to some degree, but I still support moving ahead with the Constitution because I truly believe it's the right thing to do. And I think all the people that fought for this and have been on this, basically forging this path for us, this is what we were working towards. And whether we take one year, two year, three years, like they've said, there's gonna be a transition time that we're gonna be evaluating and monitoring how everything comes together. And I feel we're gonna have the opportunity to make the changes that we wanna see. But you know, with any government, who's 100% happy with how things really go? I mean, even in mainstream, 
name off the political parties, like how many people here support any of them or one of them. I, I don't know, but I mean, this is our own government and we have to keep moving forward. I think this is our opportunity to do that. Um, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go and finish this off now with mic number two and then mic number two again and then mic number three. Thank you. Merci. Stein me meeting Vidotianonta. I'm the interpreter and I'm gonna have an interpreter with me <laughs> <laughs> to speak English. Neandum Tanamaski Vidotian Omgamamape. You are a tipita man. I see no work. Orskayak. Quasky big squito. Extra max at all. Mister Indeetin. Tapmatian. Tapita manoma. Tapita tago. Jeff will say it in English. Uh, the elder would uh, like to just say thank you for, for the debate that's going on. He's, he said he's been around 50 years, 50 assemblies, and he's very grateful that the, the debate is healthy and, and, and the young, younger people are coming up, they're educated and whatnot, and they're adding uh, to the debate. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, we're going to go now to mic number three and then mic number one, and then we're going to go for a vote. Thank you. Ward Southern and Region 3. So, after listening today, it, it's more than obvious from all these comments today, whether you're academia, whether you're a passionate individual, there is a ton of dysfunction across our nation. There's people fighting, there's presidents and vice presidents not talking to each other. We have a lot of dysfunction here. And it's more than evident that the Society Act, it's not working for us. We've outgrown it. We want to be a government. We want to be a nation. The Society Act is not set up for that. We have to follow rules the, that do not give us our culture and the way we want to run our government. I heard today, we don't do this, we don't do that as a nation. Well, here's the reality. It's called money. It takes money to give services. It takes money to help people. As a society act, our funds are limited. As mentioned yesterday, our budget was cut from $1.5 million, $300,000. And I will assume that our provincial government will continue to cut that to nothing over the years. How are we going to help our people? Transitioning to a government will give us rights, will force other orders of government to listen. It will give us the potential for a financial framework and money to deliver services that we're all talking about today. That is also part of our, the reality of things. If we want to be a government and deliver services, there has to be revenue in order to do it. So, thank you. I can tell you over the last 10 years, I dealt with the province and the feds on a regular basis and I can tell you their legislation is far from perfect. And their acts, the way they're written, sometimes are embarrassing. That's a constant problem. Wanting perfection, not going to happen, hasn't happened in either order of government. The one thing I'll say from being in government is, 
This is the first structure I have ever seen where the power is actually in the people's hands at the district level that can make decisions, that can do funding, etc. If you look at the structure, it is a true bottom-up. It's not a top-down dictatorship system. And, and you can see that. So please take the time to look at it. That's quite evident. So two quick things. Just want to talk about fear. And I was talking to some people the other day. There's different types of fear. When something bad happens to you, there's, of course, the fear, and you find out something, and you deal with it. It might be good, or it might be bad. But you're able to, once you get that information, then to make decisions. The biggest fear for every one of us, myself or anybody one of us, is the fear of the unknown. Because you don't know the outcome. You don't know what's going to happen. So the only thing we can do, and I implore you to think about today, the resolution today is about putting this to a vote to all 50,000 plus members. It says right in the resolution, it's going to get mailed to those individuals. The, the proponents that said today, we don't have enough engagement, not enough people got involved. I'm going to say from being in government, well, that's the members' fault. They need to get involved. They need to get off their couch and get involved. But bringing this to a vote is going to bring it to 50,000 members instead of just the assembly here. 50,000 members. So I am imploring you, pass a resolution to give the opportunity for 50,000 members to say yes or no. Thank you. Thank you, Mike number three. All right, Mike number one, Judy, leave us with something profound. <laughs> Marilyn Lise from uh, Region 6, and I want to plant a seed in everybody's head that this is, should not be about personality conflicts. Because if, just because we don't like somebody, we shouldn't make our decisions based on that. Think of it as a nation. What we're doing is the good for everybody, even for those ones who don't want to get involved, who don't want to have anything to do with it, but, but they're still going to vote on it. And so this is for them. And in 10 years from now, when, when this constitution is implemented, everyone who had the fear of the unknown, it's going to be fixed. It's, we're going to be there. And it's going to be something that we are going to leave for our children. Thank you. Thank you. I know I said that with the last speaker, but out of respect for mic number two and then mic number four, I'm going to allow uh, uh, mic number two and mic number four for final comments. These are our last two speakers. Mic number two. Okay, at the m &A, I'm Cindy Lemley. I am a knowledge keeper from Local 203 in Lethbridge. If the m and is already getting 100 million, why is there a rush? We're getting next to nothing in the locals. It's unclear how the committees are going to support us. I also have a, a thing to say. As an elder, I was always taught all my life, that we build our foundation. When we plan a house, when we plan a family, when we do community stuff, we always start with the foundation. And the foundation should be built in a way that when we build upon it, it gets stronger. If we build a foundation with full of cracks and holes, what we build is gonna fall apart. So we, as a nation, need to remember that when we build something, we have to build it strong enough that when our kids and my grandkids and my great grandkids step forward, they're still gonna have a strong base in which to improve on what we're setting forth. And we need to make sure we set something forth that they will look back and say, my family helped set this forth. But we built it strong not with cracks or holes or little diminishes. We need to make it important. It doesn't matter what the government built. We know they're no, you know, they're, they're, they're them. But we need to build what's ours, our Métis people, our foundation, our people, not just high ups, lows, everybody. We all have to be able to step forward and say, I like what you're doing, 
or I don't like what you're doing. But we need to build a foundation where each of us has a right to say, but each of us has a foundation for our government that when we build it, other people look at us and say, holy cow, look what they did. We want to do what they did. Maybe we should talk to them and learn how they did it because we want it for us and for our people. So we need to set an example for everyone that we respect and love our people and that we're going to build a strong foundation so that we can grow and become a mighty nation again. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Mike number four, our final speaker. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. You're doing a good job, but I don't envy you. <laughs> Madam President, uh, my, my name is Joe Blind. I'm from Zone 1. I've been around for 50 years. I think this is my 50th attendance of a, the assembly. But I, I was listening to everybody, and uh, there's confusion and fear. I, I'm not, I'm not uh, blaming you guys because we've never had a constitution, have we? I've been watching this baby trying to be born for 50 years, folks. And we had a very difficult time. We could never get it through the, the natural borning process. So what I'm going to suggest today we have a cesarean birth on that poor institution. Thank you, and Joe. how we're going to do that, I got, a, I got an explanation for that. I look around and all I see is elders here. They are grandfathers, grandmothers, fathers, mothers, sisters, and all kinds. We know how to raise that child. It's going to be our baby. And if you guys are scared, what the heck are you scared for? You're scared for change. 50 years I've been standing here listening to Constitution, Constitution. I thought it was something we could eat or, or shoot or some damn thing. But it's real, folks. It's real. And that's what you guys got to understand here. I look around and all I see is academics today. Back in 50 years ago, Christ, we, the guy who had the highest grade was Stan Daniels. He had grade eight. <laughs> and here we got university graduates and everything, and we still can't come up with the baby. Well, let me tell you, folks, Madam President, I suggest you take this through. And get, and get it done. Okay, can I hear question? Question's been called. All in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. Ron Harrison, you may have to get ready here. Okay, put your hands down. Those opposed to the resolution, please raise your hand. Motion is carried Woo! unanimously. Okay. We're going to take a coffee break right now. It's 3.07. Let's come back in 15 minutes, and we'll finish off the rest of the agenda, and then you guys will be free to go, and then if we get through it all, you won't have to come back in the morning. So let's come back, let's get busy, and let's get dangerous. 15 minutes. <laughs>